Hello again everyone, Tim here from timscomputerfix.net. Hey, in this video I want to show everyone uh, a micro ATX computer build that I did for a customer here. And I used uh, a Lian Lee PCV358 case. Now this is a micro ATX case from Lian Lee Li, and it come in two different colors. You got black and silver. We'll be kind of reviewing and taking a look at the black one here today. But the black one is PCV358B and the silver one is PCV358A. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at uh, some components that I'm going to be throwing in this. We're going to be building, building this computer from the ground up. But really in this video uh, I'm not really featuring the parts that are going in it. I'm not really going to talk much about those. I'll just touch on them for a second. Uh, this video really isn't all about what's going in the computer. It's really all about the case. So I really want to sh kind of show anybody interested in this case uh, the good features or the bad features and what to maybe watch out for and maybe get some ideas on some wire management if you're thinking about buying this case. Now this case as I mentioned is a mini tower chassis. It's, it's brushed aluminum. Uh, it weighs 4.2 kilograms, so it's very light. It also requires, if you want a DVD drive or Blu-ray drive, it requires a slim optical drive, so keep that in mind when you're buying this. Um, we've got six 3.5-inch hard drive bays in this, and we also have uh, two 2.5-inch hard drive bays. This case also comes with or has the option of four expansion slots. Also has a front, uh, has two front 120 millimeter fans that are included. And it also has one rear 120 millimeter fan which is included. And it also has optional, an option for two side 120 millimeter fans. And we're going to install one of those here in this build. We also have uh, USB 3.0. We have two of those ports and HD audio. So we have a maximum length for your VGA card of 330 millimeters, which is plenty for any size video card at the moment. Uh, it also has uh, plenty of room for your power supply, a full 200 millimeter power supply. And this case even accommodates for a closed loop water cooled unit for your processor if you so choose. You can also mount a 240 up to a 240 millimeter radiator. Yeah, if you want to learn more about this case, you can just visit uh, Lee and Lee's site at lian-li.com. That's lian-li.com. And you can look up the PCV358 series and it'll give you the full, full, full rundown and specs and even a short video of its features. So in this video I will be installing some components for a customer that has specific specifications. So let's just take a real quick look at what I'll be installing on this in this case. Yeah so in this instance we'll be using the Intel Core i7-4770K Haswell processor. We will also be using the ASRock Z87M Pro 4 motherboard. We'll have an EVGA Supernova bronze certified 750 watt power supply. In this instance, the customer wants to go with a superclocked EVGA GeForce GTX 662 gigabytes. We'll be installing 16 gigs of G-Skill DDR3 1600 memory. We will go with one terabyte Western Digital Black SATA hard drive and we will be installing Windows 7 Home Premium which we won't even be showing in this video. Okay we've just took this case fresh out of the box. I just want to kind of give you a little panoramic view to show you just how beautiful the paint job is on this aluminum case it's brushed aluminum uh, it's just gorgeous uh, really great looking 
small form factor case here. Uh, notice how open, open aired the sides are there. So there's no issues with ventilation here, but I'm going to show you now. Let's just go ahead and open this case. So there's three thumb screws on the back that kind of hold the lid down. We can take those off, take the screws out. But before we lift up, we'll have to actually take these side panels off. Now these side panels are snapped into place pretty firmly, but uh, they have metal pegs on the side panel that snap into plastic um, snaps, I guess you would say, that are kind of built into the case on both sides here. Lee and Lee is kind enough to put a couple of spare plastic snaps. Uh, in with this case, just in case if you ever have a issue with one of those plastic pieces breaking, but you can see the metal metal pegs there. And that kind of opens up the inside, gives you a nice look. Now we can take the top cover off and it kind of opens up like a folds open, like the hood of a car, basically. And once this is open, it lays flat. And that just exposes the entire inside of the case to where you can easily get to your components and start installing as needed. Now that we're fully open you can see where the two front 120 millimeter fans are located where your DVD-ROM drive will go here in that slot and also your front panel connectors there all ready for you to unbundle and get tied in here where your motherboard lays you can see where there's two nice grommets rubber grommets for your wire management your power supply there gets mounted underneath and underneath there also you can see where your drive bays are those can be removed and uh, on this other side of the case here you can see where the 220 millimeter side fans go or and or you can put your water-cooled radiator there also. When you remove these two thumb screws, this fan door swings open and can be removed easily, but it kind of gets it out of the way if you need extra room to work. I think that's a really nice feature. Okay, we'll show you real quick here. There's also a small box of hardware that Lee and Lee includes. It includes all of the Motherboard screws, thumb screws, any extra standoffs, and some adapters that I think come in real handy because Lee and Lee's put a lot of thought into this case. So a lot of these adapters you will probably end up needing. I'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, it's time to start mounting our components. I'm going to start off with this ASRock Micro ATX motherboard is what we've chosen to go with here. Uh, it's a nice, a nice, a uh, nice motherboard. Uh, very well built. Uh, the final result I was very pleased with, but we'll go ahead and take this out of the packaging and we'll get ready to get this started. We're going to get our processor mounted nicely. We all know the routine on that. Gently lay our processor in. Lock it down. Pop it in place. Once that's locked in, we can go ahead and we're just going to use a regular stock heat sink in this case. You can use water cool. This case does accommodate for water cool. And now our IO shield just pops right in like so. Goes in nicely, snaps into place, fits well. After that, we can just go ahead and lay our motherboard into place and line them up with our standoffs which have come pre-installed in the system. Now I'm just taking care that everything lines up. We're going to fit everything into that IO shield nicely. Make sure that all lines up. Kind of push it into place. Give it a little firm push there and then we can check We'll check to make sure on the back on the back side of the I/O shield that everything looks looks correct. Firmly push it in place. 
think we're looking good here. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yep. Looking good. Uh, coming along well. So yeah, so once we've confirmed everything lines up, we'll go ahead and just put our motherboard screws into place. All these motherboard screw locations all been pre-configured on the motherboard tray. Didn't have to add or take any standoffs out, so I was quite happy with that. Anything to save me some time, but Looks really good mounted in this case. We go ahead and get our CPU fan plugged in to our CPU fan header. That's good to go. We'll get our memory put in. Pop our memory into place. Two sticks we're using here. So there's one. Be sure we follow the motherboard recommendations in the manual of how and what slots they want they would recommend you to put these memory sticks in that's important and now we're going to be moving along to our power supply very nice power supply here love the EVGA stuff on power supplies I think they've done a great job manufacturing these quality power supplies yeah I will say Purchasing a modular power supply is a must when working with micro ATX cases. Here we have our drive bay. It's going to be removed. A couple of screws hold it down and then it just slides right out. We're going to go ahead and just remove this drive bay and probably keep it out permanently. That will help with my wire management. You can leave that in if you plan on having many drives, but back here on the back is an actual bracket that kind of dresses out the power supply once it's in. We'll go ahead and just remove that. And now we're ready to set our power supply into place. It just slides right in nicely. Fits right in. No issues there. We'll just kind of work it into place. And then once that kind of snaps into his, it falls into its little groove there we'll go ahead and add the the bracket back in you can see how it's sitting here nicely we'll just add our add our finishing touch bracket there dress to dress the power supply out that's been added back and now we're going to pretty much uh, start running these uh, wires up the 24 pin connector and the CPU connector because what we want to do now is test to be sure that this motherboard and processor and power supply are working well and nothing is DOA. You can do this before you even mount the motherboard. You can take it out of the box and put your components on real quick before you go through the trouble of mounting. But uh, since it was just so easy uh, to mount this in the case, I just went ahead and mounted it. And now I'm going to now I'm going to test it. So I'm snapping this down. And notice how I got my fingers underneath the board, and kind of pinching it. So be real careful with that when pushing down on those 24 pins. You know, give it give the give underneath the board a little bit of support because you do have to put a fair amount of force on that. Now I'm bringing up the CPU power connector here. I think it's a six pin on this board, so I got a four plus two pin. We'll get those in, and I think uh, from that point we're just going to go ahead with the the video card. So the video card now is going to fit down into its PCI Express slot. I'm going to kind of rock it back and forth, nice and easy. Be very gently. Move it back and forth until you hear it kind of snap into place. And once you hear it snap, I like to get a visual and be sure that that card is indeed sitting down in there 100% and that snap is engaged. So we're going to go ahead now and run up our PCI Express video card cables. I think this card requires one six pin. 
Now that's a four pin. So we got that all done. And now I'm jumping the power button here with the screwdriver. Going to jump the two power pins just to get it up and running. I got a screen connected, mouse keyboard. We're going to confirm that everything works before we proceed with finishing this build. And here you see our beautiful UEFI BIOS. Everything looks like it checks out just fine. I think we're just going to go ahead and proceed with this build. Okay, what I'm working on here is the USB 3 front panel connector that goes to the board. Uh, luckily for me, you know, this connector is right towards the bottom of the board. So uh, you might want to pay attention to that when you're ordering motherboards. I'm going to go ahead and zip tie this here because I didn't want to put any excess stress on that cable or on that port when this thing is open. As you can see here, it's sitting nicely. I've got it zip tied here to where it doesn't move anywhere. And this is the rest of the cable. I mean, I have just enough slack to put that USB 3 cable in place. So keep that in mind. For what we're going on here, we're going to the front panel audio. And it looks like, you know, they did give us enough room for this. So that's plenty long. We just get that snapped into place and we can also tidy that up a little bit with some wire management. We're going to go ahead and take out our second drive bay. This is where we're going to mount our one terabyte Western Digital Black hard drive. That just slides out into place. And I want you to notice too on these that uh, they have a uh, sound dampening on these drive bays, rubber grommets for sound to keep the vibrations down. Thought it was a nice little feature. You can see there the rubber grommets and then they're just put in place by some thumb screws. Just tighten them up there. Slides right in. Uh, easy enough done. So before we put this into place we want to go ahead and get a power cable connected, a SATA power cable coming from our power supply. So we'll go ahead and add that now. We have that into place. We just snapped it in. This is why it's great having modular power supplies because you can just add wires as you need them instead of having all those wires in there that you don't need. So there's our power. Snaps right into place. and We'll go ahead and kind of zip tie that up a bit tidy it up and now we're going to work on getting our uh, data cable we're going to feed our data cable up to the motherboard that's going to snap into one of our SATA ports here like so and our cable just runs down and we'll go ahead and get that connected to our hard drive once that's done, at this point, we're ready to slide our drive bay back into the case. Do a little more wire management here. Got to keep those wires good and tidy, especially on t fairly tight cases like this. Although, as you see, we still have plenty of room. So that's pretty impressive so far. We'll slide this drive bay back in and we'll just put our two screws back and that'll be our hard drive installed yep at this point we're going to go with our front panel our front panel connectors power switch LED hard drive LED all that good stuff be sure that gets put into place correctly from the motherboards instruction book and here's another case here to where we want to be careful we have a loose wire here coming from the case from the front of the case. So we want to tidy that up, strap it down, which we have done. And these right here are our front fan connectors. And as you can see, it's very short. We well, can't even reach the motherboard. And that's where these adapters come in that Lee and Lee has provided. These are Molex adapters that we can plug our fans into. And all we need now is to add a Molex cable to our power supply. We're going to concentrate on a bit more wire management here. You can see where I've gotten the adapters hooked into 
the Molex cables, give itself some more wire management, and we're going to place this cable in a good spot under here where our fan cables can reach and we can keep those wires and all out of the way. So that's what we're doing here. Now we can plug our little three pin fan connectors up to that and we can use some more wire management, zip, zip these guys up, get them neat looking. But that's how we do those fans. Now we're going to do the side fan. As you can see, that little fan panel does come off easily. There's noise dampening on this panel also, rubber grommets. But basically what we can do, in this case I'm going with one 120 millimeter fan. You can do two, or you can do radiator, dual chamber radiator if you like. But we'll just get these screws tightened up here on this fan. And this fan here, I'm just going to connect directly to the motherboard. No problems there. Swings open freely. We're good to go there. Okay, this is our slim hard drive adapter here, our, our mounting plate. There's two ways to go about this. I'm just going to remove it here to show you. And we're going to just uh, take off the front, the front plate. If you choose not to have a CD drive, then that plate can stay for cosmetics, but we're going to take it off. And I will say, when ordering a slim drive, be sure that you're ordering an OEM slim drive and not a proprietary one. There are some slim drives that are a little thinner than others, which may make this mounting process a bit more difficult. Now you can mount this drive like this, or you can just simply take off the faceplate and slide your slim drive in through the front and mount it that way. Just add your screws. Now please also keep in mind that you're going to need a, an adapter that goes from micro SATA to regular SATA going from that drive to the motherboard. Here we have some wire management taking place. Kind of tidy some things up a bit. It's looking a little better. A lot better actually. And we're almost done here. But I just want to kind of give you an idea of some of the wire management that I've done. And uh, how things are looking here. Everything's tidied up, looking good. Plenty of room in this micro ATX. Could have put a bigger video card in there, no problem. And notice here too, I uh, paid close attention. When you're closing this lid, I've got these wires routed and tied up in such a way that they won't impede with the fans. That's also something to pay very close attention to. I would like to be able to open this case up while it's running and close it while it's running without wires getting caught up into the fans. But we'll go ahead and close this back up. We'll go ahead and snap on our side panels. They snap on and off so easily, but they're held on pretty, pretty darn good. Nice system they have there, these snap, snap sides. I'm quite pleased with it. And we'll step on the other side, and we pretty much have ourselves a complete build here. Uh, overall, I'm very pleased with the design of this case. A uh, couple things to watch out for is I would wish that that USB 3 cable for the external USB 3s were a little longer. But all in all, I really can't complain. Temperatures are really good on this. It's a sharp looking case, low profile. I love it. So uh, hey, I hope this helps someone out there decide if they want to purchase this case or not. I would highly recommend it. I think at the time I purchased this, this case ran around 100 and 140, 40 odd dollars US. Uh, I think it's well worth it. Very good case. And like I say, I hope this helps somebody. I really appreciate you watching my video. Uh, please rate and subscribe to my feed. I would really appreciate that. Uh, you can also leave me some comments down in that comment section. I'm going to have some more videos coming your way here in the near future. So thanks again, everyone. And until next time, everybody, see you soon.